welcome back to the channel. We're in the Lake District and we're at Hard Knot today. So we're going to do Hard Knot itself. It's a 9K circular and we're going to pop into Hard Knot Fort to have a look at that. Right, let's check it out on the map. This walk in Estelle Valley takes us on a track shortly reaching Hard Knot Roman Fort. We spend a little time here exploring before moving up to Hard Knot Pass. The ascent eventually takes us to the summit of Hard Knot. This is our only way of the day. From here, we descend to take a visit to Eubank. It's then a steady and stable path as we continue down and round to Lynn Cove Beck. We encounter a series of pools ideal for wild swimming. These soon turn into Lynn Cove Beck waterfalls. And I'd say these features make this one of the most exciting valley walks in the Lake District. <laughs> Got Alison with me today. Hi. <laughs> uh, she'll be taking a few photographs, so if you want to check out her Instagram, I'll put it in the description for you. But we're working our way up. We've just come over Hard Knock Pass, which is a notorious route, and we're going to go up that way again. There's a few parking spots up and down, uh, so you don't have to go over Hard Knock Pass because we're going to cover basically both sides of it. But I'll put the map in, and you can choose what you want to do. Hard Knock Pass itself is a notorious <laughs> high route. We've just gone over it. Alison's driving today. <laughs> what do you think of Hard Knock Pass? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so apparently I'm going to drive back. <laughs> We're going <laughs> over this stile first to get us onto the walk. So Hard Knot is, we're going up there, up to Hard Knot, and we'll pass the fort on the way, so I'll show you that in a bit. And then we're going to come back down the valley just here. Let's get down. <laughs> Woo. Steep, isn't it? Yeah, it's steep. <laughs> steep one. <laughs> Right, the whole thing's steep though, because this is the uh, Southern Fells, so it's one of the volcanic regions of the lakes. As you can see, autumn, so it's a bit brown around the lakes today. Albany. This is a little bit mucky. You can actually just stick on the road if you want to, join this path a little bit higher up, but it should be all right. We're just back from Madeira, and that is equally volcanic and pretty steep, so I'll put a link in for that if you want to see a couple of foreign ones. But yeah, hard knock pass. Very twisty and turny going up. Um, I'll show you on the drone, but it is quite a tricky one. And in winter, it often gets closed because it's just a bit steep in places. Behind me there, you can see the Astale Valley. So this has got great views pretty quickly because it's pretty steep up. <laughs> Look at that view back there though. Got that already. I've only been a few hundred yards. The car's just down there. <laughs> I've not got anywhere. Little gate, look at this. <laughs> don't, know, don't quite know what's going on here actually. <laughs> it's like a doll's house. Can you squeeze through? Look at this. <laughs> what a strange little gate that is. Well, I guess it's to stop a sheep getting through here. Not that I think they could, because it's about six inches wide. I'm not sure I can get through it, to be honest. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Right, so there you go. Easy. <laughs> There's a few people in Jeeps decided to come down here. It's uh, one to try out your vehicle on, for sure. Not like Mark 1 Land Rovers. Hard knot is a Wainwright and he commends it for the views over the Estale Valley and the fort is in there as well, it's one of its key features. So we're going to pass that fairly shortly. This is first sight for us today. So it's a little bit in the cloud at the top, but it's not due to rain today and hopefully that might clear for us by the time we get there. This one's evaded me twice, so I did two other walks in the Cockleybeck area, and uh, that's on kind of the Coniston side of the Hard Knot Pass. And yeah, this was the last thing to do in the day each time. One time I ran out of light, the other time I ran out of energy, I think. <laughs> so yeah, today is the day we get to conquer it. So within the first kilometre, really, you're going to come across the fort. And this fort's been here since pretty much the uh, second century. Mm -hmm. 
So here is the fort, on it really quickly. So I'll show you a few features when we get inside it. When you're here and you approach it, you can see the sort of like a slate line going across the walls. And what's happened there is the whole thing's about two meters high on average and the slate is just the marker for the conservation work. So anything below that is original, anything above that has been added on. Here's the plaque then. Hard not Roman fort. The wall below the narrow slates course is originally Roman works treated to prevent collapse. Above this, the wall has been reconstructed from fallen Roman facing stones to a height of not more than six foot six, which was the maximum height of original works found in position. Six foot six, it's a big one. <laughs> I bet it was bigger than that though. <laughs> not doing much defending at six foot six. Let's go in and have a look around. Because the walls are so thick, it's 114 meters on the outside and the internal measurement is 105 so on average they're about 1.7 meters thick so it's quite a substantial building it's got a couple of unusual features one being that it's pretty much square and forts traditionally would have been sort of a playing card shape like a rectangle uh, but i guess because it's of the hard standing that it's on and the topography that's made it have to be square down on the plan you've got the thin building here which is the Praetorium which is the commanding officer's house and then on this side you've got two granaries and then in the middle you've got the headquarters building Behind me is the commanding officer's house. Uh, when I was reading about this before I came, it said really that it'd have four rooms normally, so they think the others were made out of wood um, because this wouldn't do on its own. A bit behind me here, it's the headquarters building and that's where all the important commands would be given out from. Some religious ceremonies also uh, completed there. These are the granary buildings. They've got quite thick walls built up and it'd have a thick roof on it as well. And that's essentially to keep the stores cold. And behind there, the majestic hard knot. It must have been quite an effort to create this because you can see actually the natural rock is very much present on the floor. There's one. <laughs> but as we, uh, go down that we're going to go to the bathhouse. Bathhouse is very important to Romans and it would have contained the, if you like, cold room or the first room you go in which is the ambient temperature room and then the second one is the warm room and the third section is the hot room and then you'd work your way through and then come back to the first room for a cold dip. You'll see a little circular bit as well. Um, the circular bit is the dry air room, so it would have been hot dry air, a little bit like a sort of sauna is today. And that looks separate, but actually it would have been covered by a wooden roof and the bit in between probably would have been changing rooms. It's a little bit boggy underfoot, yeah. <laughs> so heading our way down the hill and you'd expect the uh, water to follow us. The bathhouse, it's actually outside of the fortifications. So it's an important part of Roman culture. Not that the soldiers here were Romans. It was actually manned by 500 Dalmatians. Not the dogs, the uh, people from the Dalmatian coast. 
and that's like an auxiliary group of soldiers the Roman army used and it was very helpful and they often had specialist skills so it's thought these were specialist horse riders and a bit further up I'll show you the parade ground but the parade ground has had about 5,000 cubic meters of stone and earth removed in order to make it flat and it's thought they had horse training taking place on there. So that's the bathhouse as it's laid out with a plunge pool up here. That's the uh, frigidarium at this end. Guess what that is? Yeah, that's right. It's the cold bit. <laughs> and then tepidarium in the middle. That's the warm bit. And then the caldarium at this end, which is the hot bit. So that would have had outside it uh, these other areas, which are where you would have the fires. The Laconicum, out here, is the sort of hot air room you would have had. There's a couple of people in it there. Right, so here I am in the bathhouse. We're starting off at the hot end here. So this is where you'd typically have your uh, sort of steam room area. Then we go through to the warm room, which is just here, start to cool down. Then I go into the cold room. I'm gonna magically appear here because I don't wanna go over the walls. So here I am in the cold room. It's the same temperature as outside. And then just to finish off, here's the plunge pool and I can just get in there for a cold dip. <laughs> if you fancy something a bit different, you can come around here. And there's a little circular building. So this one is, it looks separate than everything else, but actually the geologists reckon this would have been covered by probably um, a wooden shelter. It would have been the changing rooms. And this circular one is actually like a sauna, modern day storm sauna. So it's uh, gonna be relatively drier, but still hot. So have a look at that. There you go. After a hard day's soldiering, have a nice relax in here. So if there's one thing the Romans did give us, it's a very thorough bath. <laughs> We're gonna go to the parade ground now and just have a little look at that, because that's quite a unique feature. It's not in most Roman forts, uh, but the Dalmatians were thought to be horse specialists, so the parade ground's actually to try out manoeuvres with horses and there's a report of tricky manoeuvres taking place and then javelins being thrown to the opponents with shields at pinpoint accuracy. The Dalmatian coast is now in modern day Croatia so I'm not sure what you'd think if you came from Croatia and ended up in the Estale Valley uh, but I'm sure they appreciated the views, maybe not the climate. So this fort it is a little bit pre-Hadrian's Wall and it was to control this particular area. So there was a fort at Ambleside, uh, a fortlet at Ravenglass, and that basically looked after a Roman road going through here for supplies. And uh, when the one at Ravenglass got built up a bit more, this sort of fell into disrepair and disuse. And then after that, not really used, but it was used about for about 200 years. The parade ground's about 200 yards higher up, and it's to the east. Gone up the hill a little bit, and we're onto the parade ground. So this clearly does not fit into the landscape, so this is it. And it's used really to, you think, train horses and do manoeuvres on here. So really important when you're getting ready for battle. What do you think they use it for? Football. <laughs> Important for a game of football, yeah. But yeah, it definitely does not sit naturally in the landscape, this. It's a field in an otherwise incredibly rocky area. I'd seen this on people's drone footage before, and I was thinking, can't really tell what's going on there. But yeah, when you're actually here, it is, obviously very different 
in the surrounding area. So it must have took some doing, but you know, what else are you gonna do in the Estelle Valley in the second century? <laughs> well, I reckon if you go down there, that's Ravenglass and you head down that way. And so they must have been getting coastal supplies in from the ships, which is probably why I think they built up the fort at Ravenglass a bit more, and they could send them down here, including troops and whatnot. <laughs> Takes a lot of troops to control Britons, but very unruly. <laughs> anyway, that's the fort. So let's get on with the business of walking and get up this big hill. The fort's there behind me. And as you come up towards the uh, rock face, there's a few supposed ways up, but neither of them are like well <laughs> trodden paths. It's uh, a bit of a lottery through the bracken. So if you're coming up, you maybe take an app like All Trails or um, something like Ordnance Survey just so you can make it clear. You can see paths, but effectively you're just walking towards the rocky edge. So no matter, no matter which way you come up, you're heading towards that edge. We're going into autumn now. This is November. So everything's gone over into auburn colours and we're free of the ferns. <laughs> right, so onto the fell side. We're gonna work our way around sort of towards hard knot pass itself. Just worth saying it is a bit on the <laughs> it's a bit on the damp side as you come across here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna go on these big stones. This section is quite <laughs> wet underfoot really. Uh, you can just go on the road because you can see it's just the passage just there at the side of me, just over there. So you can go on the road and we're actually gonna to head to the road and then we'll follow it a little tiny bit, just a few yards, then we're back onto the fell. The path just works its way to the road for a little bit, and then we head round. It's just a bit too sketchy up here, so we'll take the sensible route. So, onto the pass. Now, this is pretty uh, dodgy going in a car. <laughs> There's quite a lot of scrape marks where cars have gone down and bellied out as they go down. You had the pleasure of driving up here, didn't you? What did you reckon of the way down? A bit wibbly. <laughs> it is a bit wibbly. Yeah, it does kind of go zigzaggy all the way down. So that is a close-up of Hard Knock Pass. And we're gonna wake our way up here. And then we'll get to the top of Hard Knot. You can definitely see a few <laughs> scrapes on there where cars have hit the belly on it. But yeah, it's not the easiest of roads. And there are other ways to get around. But your sat-nav will probably say this is the quickest way. But be prepared. <laughs> it is really steep and winding, so it's a favorite for motorcyclists. But yeah, a tricky route, really. Yeah, you'll see this cairn at the top here. And then this is our path back onto the fells again. The road's at about 400 metres and we're going to Hard Knot, which is at 550. So if you want to do it dead quick, you can actually just park there and walk up this little hill. It's not too far. Uh, but where's the fun in that? I say this route brings in the, uh, the fort, get to go up here, pick up another way and right, and then we're going to do the valley walk back. So it's quite a reasonable one to do it's about 9 10k and you can do it pretty much in half a day so i'm doing this because it's one of the autumn ones the uh sunlight's at a premium so best not to go too far i've got torches with me just in case anyway it might be a 150 meter climb but you notice it <laughs> so maybe a little stop on the way as we're coming up here you can see it's probably Clagged in a bit around me. It's a little bit misty, which is, it's fine really, because we've had a view from the fort and we're near the top of this anyway. The path up here, it is still a bit boggy, but there's some stones in it, so it's not too bad. Uh, you can probably hear the back at the side of me here. 
and that's taken the majority of the water off away from the path. I was going to go over border end, but it's clagged in now, so I won't see anything. So I'll do what I was going to do. Getting over Hard Knot Gill here, and then work our way up to Hard Knot. It's a little bit of a fiddly path going across the top. And I said, just doing this because I tried to pick up with this particular Wainwright twice before, uh, but I just didn't have the energy one day or the light another day to do it. So, get it today. It's a short one off. I've done everything else in this region. So, if you want to have a look at the other ones, I'm in the Southern Fells, so I'll put it in the uh, description for you and I'll put a link in to the folder if you want to check out those. So, there's quite a few in there now because I'm most of the way through my Wainwright journey. How many Wainwrights have you got? 70 summit. High 70s. That looks precarious. A few people have been commenting on the videos and thanks to everybody who does that because that really helps me and it's good to have a chat anyway, just to see what you've been up to. So if you've done this, I've been around here in the Southern Fells, just let me know what you've done and when you did it. Because some people are saying, oh, we did that one you did the other day, but it was uh, in the clag. Well, this one is today, so I'm joining you in the clag today. But that's all right, just embrace it for what it is because you're out in the hills, it's dead peaceful here. And even though I now can't see anything, <laughs> it's actually totally fine because it's just dead atmospheric for me. Do you like the clag? Put your hands up if you like clag. <laughs> no hands going up there. <laughs> you like the views, don't you? <laughs> Is that a path or is it a river? Yeah. <laughs> That's a river. You can walk in it if you want. Well, I have been doing that for <laughs> You ever seen American Werewolf in London? No. If you've watched American Werewolf in London, <laughs> it reminds me of this. <laughs> Don't go onto the moors. This is heading up onto some dry ground. <laughs> Quite a climb, isn't it? A bit more of a climbing test as we go up. And it's a bit slippy because it's not raining, but it is misty. If you have ticked this one off your list, then let me know how you did it. And if you did any other Wainwrights with it, because it is on a couple of routes where you can pick up about four. But yeah, they're about 12 miles or so each. So quite long and not got it done in uh, November anyway. When I started doing this about a year ago, uh, I used to always carry paper maps, and I still do that. But when it's really clagged in like this, you can't see any features. So I always use an app with me as well. So I've got all trails, and I use that to kind of trace it when I can't see anything. Because it's all very well when you can see bodies of water and you know what's what. But when it's like this, it's a uh, disorientating experience. So yeah, I would recommend you get something like that, but let me know, do you use a paper map or do you use an app or do you use both when you're out on the fells? What do you use? I use you. <laughs> you use me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it is a bit of a, well, in the fog, it's disorientating. So we've found our way here via the app. A few more yards to go, and then we'll be on top of it. This looks a bit steeper. We wind our way up. Looks like a couple of routes. I'm going to take this one. Might be two years since I last attempted to get this. So, glad to take it off. Yeah, it's just up here, and that is the top of Hard Knot. Well, I guess it would be a lovely view out over the Estelle Valley normally, but today is a sea of white. Nevertheless, boop, you've been defeated. <laughs> there we go. All right, it's not exactly a photo opportunity, but nevertheless, it is one ticked off. The drop down to Eubank is about 50 meters. So it's not that far, it's not that much of a drop, but really Hard Knot is the uh, pinnacle of the walk for today. And we'll work our way 
out of this clag now as we get a little bit lower. All right, we are dropping down now and you're getting to see a bit more of what's going on. So we'll carry on working our way down to Eubank and then we should be under this clag quite soon. Getting a bit further down now and that is Eubank over there. So we'll just head our way up there and onto it and then we can head down into the valley. What do you think of the walk? It's wet. <laughs> It is quite wet on the foot. It's one of those walks. It's like sort of a peaty marshy top. So dry pair of socks when you finish. That'd be a good one. It is a bit boggy and you can see the lying water there. You're right over there. Uh, but it's quite an interesting top. There's like quite a few little markers and bobbles and peaks on it. So yeah, we're just heading over there now. The trail going forward just carries on around here but we're just gonna shoot off there and pop up Eubank. Have a look at it. We're just sort of at the edge of the clag layer there, so might get a view, let's find out. Eubank's only like 50 meters off the main path, so it's gonna go over, tap the top and see if you can get a look over the valley. Oh, it's gonna pick our way through these rocks here. Try and get up. The top's just like a sudden outcrop that pops up. So it's one that a lot of people might not visit. I'd say the main path goes straight past it, but it's worth a look, I think. Oh. <laughs> Which is the top? It could be either. But I think this one has something on it. Oh, it does open up a bit. Right, the other bit looks a bit higher, so I'm gonna get on top of that one, because that's gonna be the true top. We're on Grange Fell recently, and uh, it's quite confusing, because lots of things are about the same sort of height. And we had a look from the top there, didn't we? <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle. So uh, we were at the Brundfell end, uh, and that is like the Wainwright top. But the other end, uh, you've got King's How there, and again that's notable in the Wainwright books. But we didn't actually get to the summit of Grangefell itself, which is only a couple of meters higher. So on for another day. Anyway, this one's for today, and we're here. So this is the top of Eubank. Well, that's uh, slightly shrouded. Esk Falls is just there and we can't, you can just about see it, but on a sunnier day, a clearer day, you'd definitely be able to see it coming down the mountainside, uh, but today not so much. <coughs> but we're gonna go nearer to it anyway now because we're gonna head down the uh, other end of the fell and then along the valley. So we'll get near it, maybe we'll see it down there. From Eubank, we're gonna go down now. We'll drop out the cloud. We're gonna drop about 150 meters or so then we'll be on the valley floor and we can have a straight walk across there. Yeah, it's a good day for November. So even though it's, you know, not necessarily the brightest day, it's November, so you've got to take in mind that you don't want to get brilliant days all the time, but it is good to be out and, you know, get a bit of exercise, see what's what. We've seen the fort, had a good old poke around there and that's been well worth a look. Right, so we're gonna work our way down to the valley floor now and then head along a little flat run. This top section is relatively flat after Eubank, so you've done all the up and all the exertion for the day and you can just relax into it now. What? Don't be kind. What, what are you saying? What? What's your philosophy for today? <laughs> Dispense the advice, go on. It looks like an old ball, it's old man. It's trying to keep his hair. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an old bald man trying to keep his hair. I know what you mean, it's all. <laughs> I just shaved mine off. <laughs> Getting a bit of a view now, aren't we? As we drop out below the cloud. That's not cloud, that's uh, Alison Zesig. She's <laughs> puffing away on the... <laughs> In fact, I think most of this is Alison's Easter egg. <laughs> the Southern Fells, 
they are quite a volcanic area and those famous ones around here are things like the old man and if you got a better look out from hard knot you'll be able to see uh, the Scarfell range as well so that's not too far away it was sort of below it yet not because in the valley it seems to be dropping down a little bit again in fact I can think I can see it going down yeah. we're going to do a turn in a minute and come around but if it's carrying up there you'll end up in the Bowfell region so I've got a video on that I'll put it in the link if you want to see it uh, but we're just going to shoot round here now and pick up the valley we're getting down to the valley floor now you can probably hear the uh, river just at the side What are you doing here today? <laughs> Not over the shop. We're down to Lynn Cove back now and we're going to come across the falls a little bit further down. They're just on the other bank, so just on the other side. So we should be able to get a shot of those. Once we're down, it's not exactly pathy, but it's a bit of a grassland walk as we go forward. From the point you get down, there's about 4.2k left of the walk, and it's relatively flat, so you'll probably complete that pretty quickly. And then we'll go and find a pub. <laughs> So we've passed the three shires fairly nearby and also if we don't get in there then Ambleside isn't too far away. So I'll think about what you want, I'll see you in the pub. There are some classic low level valley walks in the lakes which take you on dead stable paths and this isn't one. <laughs> it's a decent path but it's quite like, it's very fieldy and it's quite sort of rocky, uh, grassy path so it's not necessarily the easiest walk back it's not difficult but it's not like a straight um ground low level path as you might expect with all gravel all over it it's not that it's all pretty though i just walk in there fast on the higher level walk there's a lower level walk but i couldn't resist this so if you're having a wild swim, you could easily get in that, it's beautiful. There's it cascading through. That's fantastic. That's a secret little spot, and I'll bet you that's quite a lot of the time. So if you are a wild swimmer, that's a belter. We're leaving that spot now and carrying on down the valley. It's opened up to us now so you can see it right in front. So that's the valley, we can see where we're going, and you can see where it plateaus out at the end there. Some moody mountains at the top. Just see it catching them all. This is Linko Beck as it comes down. And we're getting to the valley. She's got a little sheep pen down there. We'll be there in a sec. A little bit slippery rocky as we come down. Whoop, all right. Yeah, it is slippery. It's uh, <laughs> slippery rock time. These look well worn, don't they? Right, <laughs> I've got to show you this. This is incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow, look at that. Right, let's go round to it. Give you a good old look. I wasn't expecting this. This is amazing, this makes the walk this. Yeah. So again, well swimming, absolutely brilliant in there. I mean, you might, well, it'd be a great shampoo advert, wouldn't it? <laughs> when you're leaving to go forward, you can go along these steps just at the side, but 
they are a bit slippery and if you fall that's your penalty so just be really careful this sit behind me as you continue to come down and it's got gathering pools all the way so i say for wild swimmers absolutely brilliant down here what do you think of that <laughs> you bring your bathing costume next time all right we'll look forward to that then <laughs> That's Linko Beck Falls, which is magnificent. And then just on the other side of the split is Esk Falls, and the split is just here. So it goes in, there's more falls up this side. That's crazy. These waterfalls go for quite a long way. Um, the last one's just behind me here. Absolutely great. So <laughs> there it is, look at that, fantastic. There you go, there's as cute a bridge as you can imagine. Look at that. We're not going over it, we're sticking on this side. But if you want to see even more waterfalls, then you've got another set on the other side going up here. If you like waterfall walks then we were on PR6 in Madeira uh, not so long ago and that is a great waterfall walk with three really fantastic waterfalls on it. So if that's your kind of thing I'll put it in the link and you can have a look at it if you wish. Now we're following the river down until we get back to the car here so you can still hear it roaring away at the side but about 3k to do and then we're there. I've got to mention as well we've only seen like four people today after we left the fort so it's super quiet so if you want a nice little walk by the waterfalls or the picnic then this is ideal if you're thinking is it worth the effort of coming out for one way night then you, know, you can make your own mind up but if you want to get some waterfall action in take off a way right um, go up a very daring pass for a drive and <laughs> see a fort then this has got it. <laughs> so I would say definitely worth a walk out. Look at it, it just doesn't stop. <laughs> what a valley walk this is. It's flattening out, but as far as valley walks go, <laughs> this is one of the more exciting ones I've been on. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I think that's the best waterfall action I've seen in the Lake District. But if you've seen something better, just let me know in the comments. Yeah. As you're coming down here, it looks like they're replanting this fell side because there's a load of tree stakes out. So that'll be a forest of the future. There's a good old cliff up there. And then we're working our way to this uh, quite sizable boulder. Looks a bit like the Bowder Stone. On this valley walk back, I'm choosing to walk right next to the river but there is another path that's about 30 meters above so if you want to be a little bit drier on the foot experience then you can go up there but i'm not bothered it's okay it's pretty gravelly this path it's quite decent right a little style here and we're in the last mile <laughs> there's a few midges knocking about as well Right, so there we go. Five steps. Just going to move a little bit higher up the mountain because it's a bit mucky. From here on it gets boggy at the bottom, so if I do the route map, I'll just put in this higher uh, walkway, which is about 30 metres up, much drier, 
and then you can just choose what you want to do because they basically run parallel to each other. Got some curious sheep up here. I haven't seen many today. Look at the bobtails. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a bomb bomb. What are you doing? Oh, I don't know. Humans. What is going on here? <laughs> Stone mechanism. Oh, that's not right. Oh, no camping in this area. You can go while swimming, but no camping. <laughs> if they can find you. Pretty much back now to where we started so thanks for watching the video all the way through if you enjoyed it, it helps me if you click on the like and if you comment also it's great to hear about what you've been doing or if you enjoyed it and also we're going to the pub now so <laughs> i'll think about what you want and i'll see you in there